Hi folks, this is Vince and Vinny Jr. with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and once again, we're going to be commentating on a game of x -Wing. Well, I will, Vinny's not in the room at the moment. So, I am playing as the Imperial Fleet. I've got one, two, and three TIE Phantoms. Specifically, I've got Whisper with Veteran Instincts. The rest of the cards will be uh, visible shortly here. Advanced Cloaking Device. And fire control system. And next up we've got Echo. And a Sigma Squadron pilot. The Sigma Squadron pilot has Stygium Particle Accelerator. And Echo has Adaptability and Advanced Cloaking Device. And all of that came into about 100 points, I believe. And over to Vinny's cards. He's got two ships, uh, Jan Ors and the Hawk 290. Lots and lots of upgrade cards. We've got the Shield Upgrade, Predator, Dorsal Turret, Gunner, and the Moldy Crow. I'll try and explain what some of these do as the game goes on. And then we've got Lando Calrissian, the YT-1300. And we've got Cluster Missiles, Anti-Pursuit Lasers, Predator, C-3PO, and Neonum. I don't know if I pronounced that right or not. Um... So before we begin, it's worth noting that we are using the old decloaking rule, uh, where a ship may spend a cloak to decloak uh, immediately before removing it, revealing its maneuver dial. The new rules state that that occurs at the beginning of the activation phase. During tournament play, the latter rule set is the one to follow, but uh, because we're playing casually, we're using the rule set that was listed on the rules reference. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're watching us play. We are aware of the rule changes, but we're using the old rule set. So, uh, let's just get right down to it. Planning our maneuvers. Now, I've got my TIE Phantom spread out because I didn't know exactly where he was going to end up after all. Was... Now, I knew that the two ships wanted to stay together. Jan Ors has that ability where uh, you can give yourself a stress token on the Hawk 290 to give a ship at range 1 to 3 one additional attack die. So I know that those two ships wanted to stay together, and uh, Lando was going to have some major firepower as a result of that. So I had to try and gang up on them as quickly as possible after finding out what his build was. Especially with all those upgrade cards. Now with all those upgrade cards, I relied on Vinny to keep track of them because I can't do both at the same time. <laughs> Especially with, I mean, by the, by now he should have a handle on everything, but he may have missed one or two. Uh, like Gunner, for example, he's got Gunner on one of them, I believe, so I'm not sure which one it is. I don't know. We'll have to see as we go. But he went ahead and did a straight maneuver here. And... Uh, there was an initiative roll at the very beginning. Uh, Echo, I had adaptability on Echo, making him a 7, and Lando was a 7 as well. I, ro I won the initiative roll, so my Echo got to move first and shoot first, which worked to my advantage because uh, I've got advanced cloaking device. So I got to shoot first, then cloak. So that was that was kind of a, a nice little benefit. Had I lost the initiative roll, then uh, that's that's I could have been in deeper trouble. But... All right, so we're replanning things here. Now, Echo's decloaking works a little differently. It uses the two slight turn as opposed to two straight when boosting or barrel rolling, so keep that in mind as well. Echo's the one in the middle. Uh, the one on the far end, uh, away from the camera, is uh, the Sigma Squadron Pilot, Pilot Skill 3. And then we've got Whisper closest to the action toward the camera. So Whisper is going to be in a lot of trouble. Well, you know, if, if, if Whisper doesn't try and, you know, hopefully take out one of these two ships. Now, he's not going to be able to take out the Millennium Falcon quickly. The Millennium Falcon has way too many hit points. So my initial strategy was to go after the Hawk 290, but he did a, a very good job in protecting it. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Now, whenever this Stygium Particle Accelerator, when that kicks in on the Sigma Squadron Pilot, when you cloak or decloak, you get a evade action. Now, I didn't bother taking the evade action when I cloaked because uh, we were too far away. You don't get to save it uh, at all. So, I, we usually don't take actions unless we get to keep it into the next round, at least on the first round, because we're never, we're never in range of combat anyway. 
All right, so he's doing a one slight turn here. Still within my firing arc from the looks of it, barely. He's taking a target lock. Alright, what's he doing? One straight. Yeah, see now he's protecting his Hawk 290 here, which is excellent for him. He, he, that's the support ship. My goal was to take that that crap out first and prevent him from using Janor's ability, but the only one in position to do that really is Whisper at the moment. So I decloaked forward, also did a two straight, so now I'm pretty close. So I have a choice. Do I want to go after the Millennium Falcon, try and blow that up? I just took a focus. There's no target locks on these guys. So I decided to, I think, go after the Millennium Falcon here. I wanted to go after... Well, let's see what I did. I don't know. Again, we've already played the game, but my memory is faulty. Yeah. I did go after Janors here. Yeah, I, I I was try I was hoping to take him out with Whisper if I could do it. Spent my focus. That's three hits, I think. He had two evades, so he did uh, one damage. Now my advanced cloaking kicked in. I got my cloak. Whisper's ability kicks in. I get a free focus. And uh, targeting computer or targeting systems, whatever it was. Whenever you successfully attack or after attacking, you get a free target lock on the attack or on the defender. So all of that kicked in. Now, with his Moldy Crow ability on the Hawk 290, he can accumulate focus tokens. He did not have Recon Specialist, but, you know. Alright, so he's using Dorsal Turret here. Used a focus. I used my focus to eliminate that, so no damage there. Alright, so what's he doing now? <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, so my 7 is shooting. 4 damage. So that's 4 hits on him. So he lost, I think, 4 shields? Yeah. I took my advanced cloak. And apologies for the camera being a little tilted here. It's just... It, it rests on a footstool. So it's like, I, I don't have a, a tripod tall enough. And we're constantly shaking the table trying to reach over stuff. He's got cluster missiles. Predator. Got an evade, so no damage. Now he gets to fire again with cluster missiles. Which is what he's doing with Lando here. He's using Janor's ability to roll one extra, but I got enough evade to... Uh, so, cluster missiles had no effect whatsoever here. And again, Janors has that ability. You can add an extra attack die uh, at the cost of stressing yourself out. Give someone else an attack die, stress yourself out. And it looks like we're planning our maneuvers again. Now, Whisper is in a bit of a pickle here. Whisper moves last. So he can easily block me in here and prevent me from decloaking and doing whatever it is I need to do. Now, at the begin now in the new rule set, this is where the decloaking would happen. Just FYI, the decloaking would happen well after at the at the beginning of the activation phase when we're ready to before anyone starts executing anything at the beginning of the activate, activation phase, this is where we would decloak and then activation would, would uh, resolve as normal. So here, I could decloak. I could have, had, the, had I been observing the new rule set, I could have decloaked here forward and potentially blocked the Hawk 290 before it moved. But we were, again, we were using, we agreed to use the role, old rule set. But in tournament play, obviously you would observe the latest rule set. And you can learn more about the newer rule set in the uh, the Force Awakens core set. There's a that's the screenshot I showed you earlier. So here is uh, here's the Millennium Falcon here trying to basically block me in. Lando's trying to block me in, prevent me from performing a barrel roll to the side or decloak to the side rather. And he's yep. See, had I decloaked first, had I followed the new rule set and decloaked first, 
I would have been moved up and he would have run into me instead. So it actually hurt me to use the old rule set here. But at the same time, I like having the ability to react to my opponents. Uh, so here, I was thinking, I was like, crap, what am I going to do now? I'm forced to run into some... I, you cannot decloak into another ship uh, or obstacle. It's just you can't do it. I, do, I don't know if you can decloak through an asteroid or obstacle, but I know you can't decloak on top of one. I'm going to have to check the rules. Yeah, I was checking... Nope. So I had to turn the camera off and consult the rules because I wasn't sure what the rules were for decloaking. So I, I realized I couldn't decloak here. just took my regular action and ran into the Millennium Falcon. Now, that was sort of tactical just because... Well, probably the only thing I could do. But... Um, now it could not attack me, although he has anti-pursuit laser, so I had to roll for damage. Rolled a blank, so no damage. On a hit or crit, I would have suffered damage. Now, the one that can attack me is the Hawk 290, who has the dorsal turret, which is bad. Now, the Hawk 290 should have shot first here, but uh, that's something that we missed. The Hawk 290's pilot skill, I believe, was an 8, and Echo's was a 7. So I should not have shot first here. That's something that we missed. All right. Took my focus. Three hits on the Millennium Falcon and three hits. I think we just now realized that the Hawk should have gone first, but he, he suffered some damage here. And now I think the Millennium Falcon is shooting. Again, we completely forgot about the Hawk 290. It will shoot at some point. I do remember that. I took my advanced cloak here. He's going after the three, the Sigma Squadron pilot with the Millennium Falcon. Predator, three hits, two hits. So I, I lost two shields and I'm down to two hull. So basically, I mean, these TIE Phantoms are awesome for attack dice, but they are glass cannons. I mean, they, they die pretty quickly if they get hit. All right, that must have been, okay, so no damage. That was the Hawk 290 there. He just realized that he wouldn't. He didn't attack with the Hawk 290, so yeah. Not sure why he's re-rolling. Oh, Gunner. Okay, that's why. I think I lost the shield. I think he had Gunner with that uh, Hawk 290, if I remember correctly. That's why he rolled a second time. Now my three shot, and looks like he took. I don't know how much damage he took. He's got some damage cards now. I can't see high enough to see what how much damage it has, but I know it's uh, pretty damaged. About I, I'd say about halfway close to death. I think it has five shields and eight hull, and I think it's around the four hull mark. I think. And here I am trying to figure out what to do, what to do, what to do. Now the Stygium, I chose the Stygium Particle Accelerator on the 3 Sigma Squadron Pilot because I knew that it would shoot last in the grand scheme of things, so it sort of makes the Advanced Cloak useless because the Advanced, I mean the Cloaking Device gives you, um, the Advanced Cloak gives you an extra 2 Agility, or 2 uh, Defense Dice, so uh, it, with it shooting last, it really wouldn't kick in until after I shot. So I chose the, the Stygium Particle Accelerator, uh, but I didn't really plan on cloaking with that guy. I just I just meant to use him to shoot as much as possible. All right, so he moved one forward, and what's he doing? Took a focus, and now that Lando in one straight green maneuver, he gets to give his friend at range one something. I think he gave Janoris a target lock, and it looks like the target lock went on the three. All right, so it's moving one slight turn there. Trying to move the tokens around. All right, so now I'm decloaking. And one hard turn. Love that. Now I had a choice. I could either go after the Hawk 290 or I could go after the Millennium Falcon since... The Millennium Falcon was damaged. I wanted to get that thing off the board. All Both of them had a 360 arc. 
so it didn't matter to me. Whichever one was most damaged and capable of firing. I mean, the Millennium Falcon has three attack dice, the um, Hawk 290 has the dorsal turret. Alright, I spent my focus, I think. I, I supposed to have five attack dice there. I realized that, rolled the extra one, got nothing. So I got three hits there on the Millennium Falcon. He guessed, I guess, zero with C-3PO. Took two hits. And now Echo gets to shoot. Or no, the Hawk 290 gets to shoot. Which I think he realized in a minute here. Yeah. Shooting the Sigma Squadron pilot from the looks of it. Three hits, that's nasty. And I took a critical. Loose stabilizer. So, Whisper, oh, he shot at Whisper. Whisper is down to one health. All right, now I get to shoot at Lando with Echo. Five attack dice, range one. Spend focus, that's five hits. And that pretty much kills him. But he's got simultaneous attack. We've got equal pilot skill. So he gets to shoot at whoever he wants before he dies. He's going to shoot at Whisper to try and knock him out. Uh, he's got Predator, three hits. I've got four defense dice, and unfortunately I took two hits. Whisper and the Millennium Falcon, Lando is out. All right, now my uh, three gets to shoot at the Hawk 290. Got four attack dice with a focus. I took my advanced cloak. Uh, three hit? No, four hits. Alright, so three, yeah, three hits. So he took one one hit and two face down damage cards. Um, oh, he took a crit as well. Stun pilot. Okay. So he's got two haul left on his Hawk 290. Now my, um, my three there is damaged. I think it ha is shieldless at the moment. So that's dangerous. Echo is at full health right now, so Echo is the only one that really has a good chance of winning this. Since uh, the 3 is lowest on the totem pole in terms of pilot skill, it shoots last, so the Hawk 290 could easily take it out here if it gets a lucky shot in. So I did a 4k turn here, hoping that he would, uh, well, hoping that I could destroy him, you know, just take him out of the game as quickly as possible, force him to go after one, and hopefully the other one would pick him off. Now, uh, I could, another strategy I could have done here is uh, maybe gone, just gotten out of there with that three, and then taken a cloak, and I would have gotten a free evade via the Stygium Particle Accelerator, or Stygium Whatever it is. Yeah. It gives me a... Once I cloak, it takes a... I get a free evade. All right. So that's, he took his focus. Two hits. Two two hits. So uh, that three is gone. That was a very lucky shot with the dorsal turret. And now it's just a one-on-one -on -one game. A fully... Uh, I got four hit points on the Echo. And he's got two hit points on his Hawk 290. He's got two focus tokens, though. I'm going to spend my focus. That's t four hits. And yeah, he's gone. Okay, so that was an excellent game. Again, very risky uh, fielding all Thai Phantoms because they are very squishy, but uh, if you can get lucky with their attack dice uh, and can mo the, and maneuver around the enemy. In this case, I couldn't maneuver around the enemy because they had 360s uh, all the time. But uh, had I flown up against, say, an X-Wing or uh, a B-Wing, something without a 360 arc, those guys can use their uh, decloak actions to barrel, you know, to first barrel roll, move, and then possibly barrel roll again out of the firing arc and still have a great position to fire. But in this case, when you're going up against, you know, ships with a 360 firing arc, there's no point in joust or no point in fancy footwork. Your goal is just to get them knocked out as quickly as possible with your four attack dice. But anyway, that was Star Wars X Wing. If you guys want to see more games, let us know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to my channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.